welcome back to Humble Homemaking. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about 11 things that I believe all women should know regardless of your color, your age, or where you work. So stick around to find out what they are. The first thing that all women should know is the importance of washing your face before you go to bed. Now it does not matter if you are wearing makeup during the day or not wearing makeup during the day. Make it a habit to wash your face before you go to sleep. All those icky things for throughout the day are getting stuck onto your skin. I prefer to use this as my step one to wash, to break down any oil or makeup on my face and then I go and do step two which is using this face wash and then I follow it with a moisturizer and then I go to sleep knowing that I'm not leaving gunk and grime on my face. I do this no matter how tired I am. I make it an effort so I encourage you to make it an effort. Wash your face. Second thing that all women should know is the dangers of the blue light emitted through your devices, your TV, your cell phones, your iPads, your whatever, any device, it emits a blue light. It disrupts that deep sleep pattern, that deep sleep that we want to get into when we are trying to get our beauty sleep. That is when our bodies recover and when we are disrupting that, we are not allowing ourselves to get into that deep beauty sleep. And we all know that 10 minutes of scrolling can easily turn into two hours of scrolling and before you know it, it's 3 a.m. and you're still stuck looking on Instagram, scrolling through your newsfeed, trying to see who's posting what in different parts of the world. What I do is about an hour before bed, I just read a good old fashioned book. I don't use my devices. All of my devices get turned off and I go to sleep. And I find that I fall asleep a lot easier and I stay asleep a lot easier. You are just a screen junkie and you absolutely cannot avoid looking at your phone screen or you need to get something done on your computer or your tablet, then I recommend buying a pair of blue light blocker glasses. These are a good affordable pair right here. They're available on Amazon. I will link them below. No, I am not affiliated in any way, shape or form. I'm just trying to help a sister out. So do your eyes a favor and either minimize your screen time before you go to bed or buy those blue light glasses or do both because we want that beauty sleep, ladies. Third thing all women should know is start making the effort to brush your hair out, then you jump into the shower, shampoo it, and, and then when you put the conditioner in through it, you wanna take a wide tooth comb and comb through it so that it detangles anything, so that it minimizes having to detangle anything when you jump out of the shower and makes styling time a lot easier. The fourth thing that all women should know is to rinse your hair out with cold, water when you're in the shower. It does your hair so much good. It seals the hair follicles, it creates a nice healthy shine, and it stimulates your scalp as well so that it promotes hair growth. For number five, we're going to stay in the shower for a minute. The fifth thing that all women should know is to turn down your shower temperature. Hot water strips your skin of all those oils. So what I prefer to do is to turn my shower temperature down so it's still comfortable to stand in, but it's a lot cooler than standing in a hot shower. The sixth thing that all women should know, and I've talked about this in a few other videos, is the, the beauty of heatless hairstyles. Heatless hairstyles are my favorite. I will probably mention these a thousand more times in a thousand more videos if I make a thousand more videos. Heatless hairstyles are my absolute favorite go-to hairstyles to do. One, because they're easy. Two, because they don't damage hair the way heat styling tools do. So I prefer to jump out of the shower and let my hair air dry. Unless I'm in a hurry, those are the only times that I'll use heat tools, but for the most part, I'm not in a hurry to go anywhere, so I just let my hair air dry. And then I'll do a hairstyle like this, which is heatless. These are waves from yesterday's heatless hairstyles that are finally just depleting. Now some nights I will damp my I will spray my hair to get it nice and damp with a spray bottle filled with water. And then I will do heatless overnight hairstyles, bantu knots, um, just regular old braids, rag curls, paper bag curls. Straw curls I can't do quite yet because my hair is really short. You can also do overnight heatless hairstyles if you take a shower at night and you do and you put your hair in that style and you let it dry overnight 
and then take it down in the morning and it will just create these beautiful luscious waves or curls where it looks like you put a ton of effort into your hair but all you did was sleep on it and the best part is you didn't have to use one single heat tool on it. I mentioned these boards before I will link them down below again but check out my Pinterest boards for ideas for heatless hairstyles and overnight heatless hairstyles because heat tools are very damaging to your hair to use all the, all the time. Take it from me, I went through high school using heat tools all the time and I didn't use any type of protective serums and it damaged my hair very bad. And speaking of heat serum, this brings me to the seventh thing that all women should know, which is the importance of heat protectant serums. This just creates a shield over your hair and it decreases the amount of damage on your hair. It also helps cut down on frizz, cut down on static, and it just creates an overall nice sheen. I have a few friends of different ethnicities that also use this serum as well, but I recommend that you just go to Sally Beauty Supply. Most of the women that work there know what they're talking about, know the products that they're selling very well, so they can maybe point you to something that will work for your hair type and your hair texture. The eighth thing that all women should know, and I've mentioned this before, moisturize daily, two times a day to be exact. More, once in the morning and once at night. Especially in these colder months where it gets a little bit drier. I've mentioned in this video up here what I use to make my nighttime moisturizing concoction. Moisturizing your skin is just so important and people don't talk about it enough. They always mention to moisturize your face but moisturize from the neck down, that is so important. Keep your skin moisturized and healthy. Trust me, in these colder months, you will thank me for reminding you so many times to moisturize your skin twice a day. Ninth thing that all women should know is the importance of knowing your sizes. Know your sizes, ladies. Know your proper sizes. Know your pant size, your underwear size, your bra size, your shirt size, your dress size. Know your sizes because if you are wearing clothes that are too small, on you, you can look very uncomfortable and feel very restricted in movement and feel very uncomfortable sitting down. Likewise, you don't want to wear clothes that are too big on you because you can look like you are swimming in them and they can just look baggy. So find out what works for your body, what looks flattering on you, what do you feel your best in. It doesn't matter what size your waist is, not everything is going to look flattering on you, not everything you're going to feel your best in. So I recommend two things to to do so that you look and feel your best. I did this a couple of years ago. It has helped shopping trips go by a lot quicker and easier and it has helped me build a wardrobe that I actually love wearing. So the first tip is to find out your color season. You can pay for a professional test to be done or you can use your best judgment and do a test online. I will link it down below. The second thing I recommend you do is to find out what your body type is. And I'm not talking about the generic hourglass, rectangle, inverted triangle, circle, whatever other shapes there are. I'm talking about one that's a little bit more detailed. It is called the Kibbe Body Type Test. And one of my favorite channels, Ellie does an amazing job explaining the body types and going through the quiz to find out what your body type is. The book is very expensive, but that's why I recommend her channel because she has an entire series on this. I did this about a year ago and this helps me so much. I know what looks good on my body, I know what I can get away with, and I know what to avoid for my body type. So I highly encourage you to go and check that out. When you're done listening to the rest of this video, we'll link her video series down below for that. But these two together make for a wonderful pair to find out what your color season and what your kibby body type is. So. Let's move on to the next one because that was a bit long. The 10th thing that all women should know is the basics of sewing. Now I'm not saying you need to know how to sew an elegant ball gown, although that is pretty talented if you do know how to do that. But you should know the basics of sewing. Knowing how to fix a ripped seam, knowing how to darn a pair of socks. Also sewing on buttons, which, which I do have a video. It is one of my older videos. I'm sorry for the quality and sound of that one, but that does teach you how to sew on buttons. And you can learn how to tailor your own clothes jeans for your husband. Fix the shoulders on a shirt so that they sit right on your body and you don't look like you're swimming in them. Mm -hmm. 
I have this one right here that Cole gifted to me a few years ago on my birthday. You can also use a hand sewing machine. I will link the sewing machine and hand sewing machine down below. They are pretty inexpensive. A tailor is great, but what about those times when you're in a pinch and you can't afford a tailor? Or what if you have to leave to go to a wedding on a Sunday and the tailor isn't opened? This is where knowing the basics of sewing come into play. So learn how to sew, ladies. Number 11. To learn the basics of cooking and baking. You do not have to be a professional chef on an episode of Hell's Kitchen in order to know how to cook your family a good home-cooked meal. Likewise, you don't have to be a professional pastry chef with your own dessert show on Food Network it's in order to know how to bake your family a scrumptious dessert to enjoy after that home-cooked meal. I took home ec in middle school and high school and I was able to learn a lot of cooking and baking also from my mother. But if you didn't have that opportunity, please do not worry, friend. It is 2019, almost 2020, and we have the beautiful internet. So YouTube, Food Network, cooking blogs, Instagram, basically everything online, Pinterest, those are all your best friends when it comes to learning the basics of cooking and baking and learning how to make simple, delicious meals and desserts from scratch. I will link some of my older videos down below. They do include some basic cookie recipes and dessert bread recipes. So check those out and try them. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment and subscribe with the notification bell so that you don't miss my next video. I am off to go and bake some oatmeal cookies. I will see you next time.